What's up fellow interneters? Today I'm going to be looking at drag and drop in SVG and how we can do that fairly easily. I'm going to be doing it in an Angular framework um, but most of the key concepts are transferable to vanilla JavaScript. Uh, so I'll try to keep the Angular at a minimum. Without further ado, let's get started. So, uh, first things first, uh, let's just grab a uh, directory and I'm just using my temp directory here. Um, and then let us kick off a uh, new project in here. Just going to use the Windows Explorer. Uh, let's call it uh, SVG drag drop like so. And uh, let's just initialize MPM inside this directory. So uh, if I kill that command, give us a command prompt at that directory. And if I run MPM in it, minus Y, we don't care. Don't ask us any questions. Bam. Okay, done. Now we've got a package JSON in there and we can start kicking off the Angular stuff. So let's uh, add the Angular in. Um, I don't want to use the global Angular. Actually, I'm supporting some legacy projects on this machine. So I want to use the local version of Angular. So I'm just going to install it locally like so. Uh, at uh, Angular slash CLI. And um, for the reasons I've got a node version, which is slightly older on this machine, I'm going to be using Angular 11, uh, just so it's compatible with that node version. So I don't have to start messing around with other projects I'm supporting on this box. Uh, bam. All right, let's wait for that to cook. Okay, super. So that's the Angular installed there. Um, and let us go in and uh, create a new Angular project using the Angular we've installed. Uh, I'm using MPX for this. Uh, and she new, create us a new Angular application. Uh, if you're not using Angular, uh, don't worry too much. Um, in a second, we'll just be um, we're just using this basically. It's just as a framework to demo in. Um, do for strict type checking? Uh, no, just annoying. Would you like Angular routing? Uh, yeah, although we're only doing one page. Uh, SCSS, thank you. And again, wait for that to cook. Okay, so that's installed the Angrier now. Um, and let's just go and have a look. Okay, super, we've got no modules, got a project there. Uh, let's open that one up inside VS Code, command, open up there, code, osh, open, and uh, that will open it in another window, yes, we trust ourselves, hopefully, uh, but not around alcohol. <laughs> Okay, we got that, and this is where we will see the HTML, and this is the controller for it. Or oh, sorry, component these days. Cool. Uh, let's kick off terminal, and um, let's just get this up and running. So um, npx ng serve minus o because we want to open it. We want to start up a server with our Angular. Okay. okay, job done. We've now got this. So let's just put these side by side so we can see what's going on. Okay, that's the one. And um, actually, let us get rid of all of this crap. H1, uh, SVG, drag, drop like so save perfect that's what we want key turkey so uh next step now is to create just the basic page and um i'm gonna put a little bit of inline styling here um got a padding uh let's say 20 pixels 
Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to next put the SVG inside of this. Um, and we want it to be fairly realistic. So not all your um, pages would, uh, or SVGs would start at the very top left of the screen. Um, you probably could, SVG would probably be in the middle of the page or maybe on the right or the left and there'd be some margins. So there's a, a differentiation between the relative uh, coordinates of the SVG and the absolute coordinates. And I want to demonstrate that, which is why I'm putting this padding in. It's not just for aesthetic reasons. So uh, let's do that. Um, and let's uh, also give it a style equals um, border uh, one pixel. Um, and then let's make it solid and green, because why not? Um, and then let's just give it a width and a height, just so it's got some dimensions. Do it 500 and the height also 500, make it easy. Okay, here we go, 500, 500, save. Okay, ta-da, amazing green box. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put some grid lines in there. Um, there are a couple of ways of doing this and um, you can, it does support uh, actually putting grid lines in itself, but I wanna draw them myself um, just because uh, I want to have some control over uh, the, the actual grid lines and um, I want to put some numbers in there as well. I'm going to do is I'm going to be using Angular for this actually um, and let's just wrap these in a G for go. What does G stand for? Global. Um, wrap these in that so we've got some sort of a wrapper and for our uh, Angular NG4 because uh, we want to go around in the loop uh, and we want to say uh, let index of uh, basically we want like let's make let's make uh, 40 of these guys um, and then we will paste uh, space them like 50 pixels apart or something like that um, so to do that we can kind of cheat and do uh, the array constructor constructor uh, and then into that we want to pass, uh, so it'd be 0 to 39, should give us 40. Uh, and then we can grab, let i um, equals the index. So that will basically give us a variable i each time it goes around in its loop. Uh, it will give us, so it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11, all the way up until uh, 39, 0 to 39. And that will be our i value. And then inside here, let's create a path. Uh, and in the path, let's um, put in, we'll just make it like one pixel or something. And um, uh, so let's give it a bit of a stroke. Oops, not a stroke. Give it a stroke <laughs> equals uh, green. We seem to be going with green, lovely green. And let's give it a stroke width as well, stroke. Unfortunately, don't get much to tell it sense with this SVG. Equals nice and thin, 0 0.2, nice and thin, just like me, I wish. Um, what else do we want to do with that? Um, we need to give it some attributes. Um, so we need to tell it um, where to draw this stroke. Um, and uh, the position that it's going to be in for this one is going to be horizontal and it's going to be going across each uh, 50 pixels is going to be going uh, kind of across from all the way from the left all the way to the right. Um, so we need to do a little bit of anger here. Um, and the actual attribute we would want to use is D. I uh, don't know why they call it D, but uh, I guess it's the actual D for data for the the, uh, the path itself, which gives it the the uh, coordinates for drawing the path. Um, if we use angrier, uh, we want to use attr dot d. Um, don't know why, but there we go. Uh, probably something to do with the name spacing actually. So attribute dot d, uh, and then we want to say uh, so. 
Um, we've got to kind of construct this string. It's a little bit fiddly. Uh, so move, M for move. Uh, and then we want to say, um, the next bit is going to be um, move to, um, we want to say, the first place we want it to move is to the 50 pixels, which will be like uh, 1 times 50, right? And then the next one will be 2 times 50, which will be 100. Next one will be 3 times 50, so that'll give us our spacings. So if I say I, the first one is going to be 0, um, which isn't particularly useful. So I can say I plus 1. Uh, we want that. Uh, and then uh, times... 50 and uh, let's just make sure that's relatively sane uh, so that should give us like 50 100 150 200 etc etc um, and then we want to say um, so that's going to be so that's going to be the x value actually so going uh, yeah <laughs> we're going along the top uh, if we do it this way so it's going to be going down. So this is going to be x equals uh, 50, uh, 100. So it's going to look a little bit like, boop, boop, boop. You can always trust paint. Except to get a nice good resolution. It's going to look like bam, bam, bam. And then we can have like a 50, 100, except we want it to go all the way down to the bottom here these grid lines okay you get the idea I'm not an artist cool uh, and then we want to say there um, so what's that um, we want to close that off there um, a little bit fiddly zero is going to be our Y because we want to start at the top so that's going to be like this the Y value up here is going to be zero it's always going to be zero up here and we just want the x value to change so the x equals 50 x equals 100 x equals 150 okay cool get the idea um so y stays at zero so that'll be where you move to and then we want to draw a vertical line all the way down to the very bottom so uh, v uh, for vertical line and then uh, let's make it 500 because that's the height of the box um, that may even possibly work um, oh except I need to close the quote off let's try that like a miracle <laughs> there's no more surprised where my own code works than me um, and then let's draw the same thing but let's draw these uh, the, the grid lines um, horizontally so for this one we need to just change these so it's going to be move to x zero and then uh, we want to go down on the y so um, i think if we just get rid of that that should go x will stay at zero uh, where's my trusty paint? X will stay at zero, so it'll always be here. And then the Y will go 50, 100, uh, 150, 200, etc. Okay, uh, let's do that. And let's see if that works. No, it doesn't, because I must have screwed something up. Uh, zero, I plus one, 50, what have I done? Uh, uh, oh, sorry, of course, it uh, needs to be H for horizontal line. Uh, otherwise, it was uh, just join <laughs> vertical lines on top of each other. It should be very cool. Save that. There we go. Cool. Got a lines. Um, and also, um, I find it particularly useful to put some numbers in there as well, because otherwise it's a bit like, okay, great. I we can see stuff. When it's got numbers in it we kind of know where things are and we can see whether it's acting properly or not or things are in the right position etc etc so let's put some numbers in and to do that we can create a text element and we will say that we want the font size equals let's make it 10 blah blah blah, blah. and do, 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 do. font size equals 10 
uh, and then we want to set actually where the position of this is so we want to set for the horizontal we want to be uh, y equals zero but x we need to set that with angular again attribute dot x to move over with each of the bars and then we want to say uh is it gonna be again i times 50 which is going to move us across x 50 every time this goes around in this loop um and then just give it a little bit of space uh, let's give it 30 because why not uh, and then let's just move it down off the top um, so it's not totally jammed up by equals 10. That should move it off the top a little bit. And then we need to actually produce the actual text itself. So we're going to see um, we want it to be, let's say uh, I, oops, I even. Um, what's it going to be well actually we don't want zero as the first value because that's pretty meaningless so let's say i plus one and let's say times 50 and that should move it over into the right place where it should be relatively sane next to the, the right okay so it's just to the left there so 50 100 we don't want the zero because otherwise it's going to be off the edge of the um, the SVG. There, which isn't much help to anybody. Uh, and then let's do the same thing going down. Uh, another text. Bosh. Um, just copy that because I'm lazy. All good programmers are lazy. Uh, otherwise, they just end up creating extra work. That's my excuse. Uh, this time we want to do attribute of y. And we are setting that to uh, actually the same thing. Let's just give it uh, go around. We want i times 50. And um, we will give it a little bit of an offset plus 45 because uh, I already cheated and did this before. 45 looks good. Um, so that will give us a y. And then we want uh, the x equals, we'll just make it 10. So it's not squished into the side of the screen and then we want the same thing again which is do, 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 copy that straight off here and paste it in there uh, okay that didn't work out very well what didn't I do oh misspelt it oh, here we go a thing of beauty and wonder <laughs> it is not anyway we know where we are. We've got some fairly same coordinates now. Um, so let's get into actually creating some elements. So uh, let's do something super simple. We've got a grid lines. Let's add a couple of rectangles in because they're easy to deal with. Uh, rect, bam, create one of those. Uh, and then we will be looking for, let's just set some basic coordinates. X equals, 150 y equals 150 uh, and then what do we got um, uh, x y no I need some width and a height of course width equals 100 easy numbers we like easy numbers 100 um, and uh, let's make it blue uh, fill equals blue uh, and let's save that lovely right let's copy and paste that and make another one but put it somewhere like different uh, let's set this one to uh, 300 x equals 300 not 3000 and uh, let's set this one to 300 as well because we can and let's make this a lovely red super lovely kidoki cool so now we've got two rectangles can you drag them and drop them no absolutely not 
So in the second part of this series, uh, we're going to look at actually dragging and dropping these boxes around now that we've got a supporting environment to do it in. So see you in part two.